Hey, what's going on everybody? Gary here, FCP Euro. Welcome back to another video. Today we're talking all things S54. We have a bunch of parts sitting here on this bench, not an S54. We'd, lo we'd love to have an S54 on an engine stand and point everything out. So we didn't want to dissect one, but we have all the parts here that we believe are really common issues with the S54. We're going to talk about all of them uh, just on the bench here, and then we will go to a car, which conveniently we have right behind us. It's a higher mileage example. We'll point out where some of these items are and how to check them yourself if you are looking to buy one, own one, whatever the case is. But with that said, we're gonna go ahead and dive right into it, start talking about what we have here on the bench. So if we're talking BMW, BMWs are not really known for their extra robust cooling systems. They're good up to a certain mileage, but after a period of time, plastic starts to degrade. What we're looking at here, uh, for example, our upper and lower radiator hoses, as you can see, no quick disconnect fitting on the thermostat housing side, but there is a quick disconnect on the radiator end side here. Uh, these can degrade over time. Uh, one thing that's very interesting is they're sealed with an O-ring. So the most common mistake that most people will make is to remove these hoses and not inspect the sealing O-ring inside. These O-rings can become flat over time. And if that is the case, it will never seal again. It'll just leak coolant either very rapidly or slowly over a period of time. Our recommendation is always to inspect these O-rings inside these quick disconnect fittings. If they're still in good shape, they're still soft, they're still pliable, you could get away with reusing them. But if you're ever taking on a cooling system job, I'm always gonna recommend that you have upper and lower radiator hoses on hand, just in case. The plastic does degrade on these. I've seen a couple where the fitting, which is physically inside the hose here, the plastic is literally falling apart. And the only thing holding it together is this clamp, which is crimped on from the factory. If you see a situation where it looks like the hose is walking off the fitting, uh, that means the barb inside here, which is part of the fitting, is, is basically gone. So you're on borrowed time at that point. And if you see that, you need to take care of it ASAP before you're stranded somewhere. It's very important that these engines have G48 coolant. Uh, that's gonna be the blue coolant. In this case, uh, you know, this is antifreeze, but when you mix it with water, it becomes coolant. The antifreeze is important not only because it prevents the water from freezing in very cold temperatures, uh, but it, it is the correct composition of antifreeze to protect the engine block and to prevent corrosion from inside the cooling system. If you use any other color coolant, universal antifreeze, whatever it is, there's never gonna be a guarantee that corrosion doesn't become a problem over time. So no matter what, it needs to be G48. Please, just make sure it's blue and mix it 50-50. Another thing to consider on your cooling system, uh, this right here is a fan switch. This is for the electric pusher fan up front. It connects to the lower radiator hose. It, pretty simple, just clicks into place. That's satisfying. Seal with an O-ring, it just locks into place. Uh, this is monitoring the temperature of coolant that is coming out on the cold side of the radiator. Basically, if there's a high thermal load on the cooling system, this switch is supposed to pick up on that. These are not necessarily known to fail. However, if you are doing a cooling system overhaul and you're replacing a low radiator hose, it makes sense to replace this. This O-ring is not available as a replacement from BMW. They only want you to replace the switch itself, and we agree that's what makes sense. But we do offer an aftermarket O-ring that fits this switch. So if you happen to want to reuse it, uh, you can go ahead and put a new O-ring on it. To that end, uh, also to bleed out the cooling system, you have these plastic bleeder screws. They're not tightened very tight. In fact, they are sealed in O-ring themselves, but it's very easy to strip these out, uh, especially if it were tightened. You can actually just break the head of it off entirely. Uh, there are brass bleeder screws available that is not going to strip out, but you can also tighten those too much where you just pull the threads right out of that fitting. So these should never be tightened that much. You basically just bomb it out and you're done. And along with that, you know, the main elements of the cooling system aside from the radiator are gonna be your, your water pump and the thermostat. The thermostats, typically if they fail, they fail in an open position, so the vehicle will never reach operating temperature, always be a little bit below. You'll burn more fuel, it won't make as much power. So if you see that the temperature is not getting to where it needs to be, go ahead and just do a complete overhaul. We offer a couple kits for that. And then you have your water pump here, basically a can of water, water pump driven by a belt Super simple. Uh, if you're gonna go into any depth, there's no reason not to replace these. It does have a weep hole. If you see any kind of coolant leaking out of here, uh, that means coolant's getting past all the bearings. Time to replace it. 
The S54 is not exempt from oil leaks. Uh, there are actually many places for oil leaks to occur. Some of them are critical, some of them are less critical. All of them are pretty annoying to deal with, unless it's a valve cover gasket, which it's gonna be the least hassle you'll run into. But starting off with the oil pan, oil pan gasket. This oil pan gasket is a steel gasket with a bonded ceiling bead on it. I don't know what it is about these gaskets specifically. It doesn't really matter whether it's genuine or aftermarket or OE. This soft, pliable portion right here, over time, it just becomes super brittle, loses seal, you get oil pan leaks. Along with that, your rear main seal. I feel like rear main seals are just a common issue on most cars, it's not a BMW thing, but this is a rear main seal kit from BMW, which is the rear main seal housing with the rear main seal uh, pre-installed for you. We have a clutch video that we did where we show you how to replace the rear main seal without having to buy the entire kit. Uh, so that is always an option as well. Uh, but when we do the rear main seals on these engines, we recommend the newest version, which is the PTFE style. And what I mean by that is it doesn't have a retention ring for the sealing lip. That's why you see this installation ring on it. The PTFE seals seem to be a little more robust. They don't burn out as quickly. Our recommendation is to only use the PTFE seals. Moving on to the front main seal. The front main seal, not nearly as much of a common problem, but it can leak. Same situation. PTFE, that's the new style seal. That's the one you should go with. Don't use the ring retention seals. Oil filter housing gasket. It's a BMW phenomenon. I don't know what it is. You know, these gaskets start off soft and pliable and they seal, but it doesn't take too long for them to start weeping a little bit. And uh, they do get to the point where they can leak quite excessively. On the S54, the oil filter housing is attached to the engine block. So the oil leak is gonna be down very low in the engine. It's very possible to mistake in it for an oil pan gasket leak. But if we're being honest, it's probably both an oil pan gasket leak and an oil filter housing gasket leak. Uh, but our recommendation on that would be to clean that away, see if you can trace it back. This right here is a separator plate for the Vanos solenoid pack to the Vanos unit. As you can see, it has those four dark circles on it. Those are known areas for leaking. And if this is leaking, that means you're actually bypassing pressure, which means your Vanos system may not be functioning properly. Another oil leak, constant pressure valve. Uh, this is for the oiling system. It's in the back right of the engine block, so on the exhaust side, sealed with an O-ring, common theme, O-ring. Uh, that O-ring will fail over time, just degrade naturally. And what you'll see is you'll see an oil leak coming down on the back side of the engine block. Uh, this is responsible for, you know, helping maintain oil pressure within the system. To be honest with you, if you're going through the hassle of pulling this thing out, I would just put a new one in. Like, don't replace the O-ring, just put a new valve in and move on with your life. The valve cover gasket, another source for oil leaks and not picture of the spark plug tube seals. It has a solid valve train, so it needs valve lash adjustments on a pretty regular basis. That is if you care about the car. Uh, 30 to 35,000 miles is the recommendation on that. So technically these things should be getting replaced before they ever go bad. But basically, yeah, these could be a leak, source of leaks. Um, if the spark plug tube seals are leaking, it'll actually drip oil into the spark plug tube. If you pull the ignition coil out and the thing is covered in oil, you wanna take care of that ASAP. Get the oil out as best as you can. Clean it up, don't let it drip in because if there's a lot of oil in there, again, that could cause a hydro lock. While we're talking about engines and lubrication systems and you know things that can go wrong, uh, let's talk about one known Achilles heel on the S54 engine. I don't think personally that this is a huge issue anymore. And of course, we're talking rod bearings. These rod bearings have been updated a couple times. In fact, the new rod bearings are a completely different construction, uh, primarily because of EU regulations that involve the type of metals that you can have or use for certain components in cars. I would say most have had some type of rod bearing service done. Very early production E46 M3s would have been under a recall from BMW to take care of this problem. One thing that is interesting about the S54, early production versus late production, is that there was a change in the connecting rods themselves. So early production S54s, you actually reuse the connecting rod bolts. Later production, you'd have to replace them. Two different torque specs, two different sizes of bolts. It's very strange. Uh, there is a serial number for the engine. Uh, we do have a pretty good guide on our website on the product pages that talks about this in depth, particularly for the rod bearing service kits. So you can identify which version you have. Uh, when it comes to servicing the rod bearings on this engine, Perfect time to replace your oil pan gasket because lo and behold, uh, you're gonna have to drop the oil pan to do it. Uh, also great time to do your engine mounts. 
because you have to drop the subframe. So that's one of those jobs where if you're going to do it as a preventative, if you're gonna do it to stay ahead of the curve, you're gonna knock out a bunch of these other projects at the same time. But it is something to be aware of. Plenty of information out there about it. Don't be frightened by it, but just know that it's somewhere in the background. And one thing that you can do to help reduce this problem is use really, really good oil, change your oil regularly, allow the engine to get up to operating temperature. Some real basic maintenance things that are often overlooked, uh, these engine mounts, for example. Here's some stock ones from Corteco. These are CFW mounts, Carl Freudenberg Works, AKA Corteco. These are the OE mounts. Uh, the most common issue with these, it's the same mount left and right, uh, but the most common thing that you're gonna find is that the right engine mount uh, basically gets compressed over time and the left engine mount is constantly being pulled because when the drivetrain is loaded, it's always shifting uh, to the right. So if you're looking and you see that the right engine mount is kind of collapsed, it's time to replace them. I would say the extreme version of this, uh, I've seen some of these engine mounts actually fail where the top portion that bolts to the engine mount supports or the engine supports, uh, this just gets ripped off. And that's usually on the left side. If it happens on the left side, it'll usually cause the engine support bracket to fracture on the right side. If you see that this thing is looking pretty rough, time to replace it. There are some upgraded options like from 034 Motorsport. Uh, they have a street density version of this, which is a little more heavy duty. It's gonna be a solid rubber bushing. There's also options from RevShift and PowerFlex, which are polyurethane. There's some Delrin options out there. And then if you're building a race car, there's aluminum, which in that case, you've gone really extreme. I would never recommend running a totally solid engine mount on a street car. You will hate your life. Uh, to that end as well, transmission mounts. These are also commonly overlooked. If you're doing your engine mounts, do your transmission mounts at the same time, that's kind of a no-brainer. The ignition coils, it's another one, common source of misfires. And what's nice about the S54 is you use a very common style ignition coil from BMW. It's this pencil style coil. This is the Eldor version, but even the Delphi uh, version of this coil, BMW uses three manufacturers for them, Eldor, Bosch, and Delphi. So there's three versions from BMW. Technically all three versions would fit. However, most customers these days are preferring the Eldor coil or the Delphi coil for the S54 engine. And along with that, your spark plugs. Uh, this is the factory NGK plug. Unless you are supercharged, turbocharged, and there's a lot of money invested in it, there's really no reason to run any other plug. This NGK plug, the factory ones, will be perfectly fine, pre-gapped, install it, move on with your life. For the spark plugs, that's gonna be the thing that you're gonna service on a um, you know, regular basis. 37,000 miles, 35,000 miles, actually, to be honest with you, you could do it at the same time that you do the valve lash adjustments, uh, which would make sense, seeing as you're already working on the valve cover area anyway. Uh, ignition coils, yeah, you can replace those at the same time if you want. I, I don't think that these really degrade over time. Uh, the only thing that does degrade on these is gonna be the spark plug connector, which is integrated into the coil itself. Uh, you know, if you look at this and you see that it's all chipped and ruined away, or you see carbon arcing, time to get rid of the coils, time to put new ones in, but uh, you can replace these individually. There's no need to replace them as a whole. However, if one is misfiring or causing misfire, it might be worth it to replace them all. Um, but you know, these don't really have a service interval on them. You replace them as need. Talk about the Vano system of the S54, because uh, that is kind of its own thing. The parts are very expensive. There's really no nice way to put that. And there are known failure items on that, such as the Vano's hubs. Those will like just straight up break. Uh, the upper timing chain guide, that will break. Uh, that's not necessarily related to the Vano system, uh, but it's right there in the same area. So if you're doing any Vanos work, which if it's an S54 and you've had it for a period of time or it needs it, you don't have a choice. The car will, it will not make the power it's supposed to, it will not drive the way it's supposed to until you do the repair. It's never gonna quite be the same. The solenoid pack is a common failure item, although that could be serviced on its own. The Vanos unit itself has an internal pump, which creates high pressure. In order for this Vano system to work, it takes the relatively low pressure that the main oil pump provides, and it increases that significantly. If that internal pump in the Vanos unit fails, you will not have adequate system pressure, it will not work. It is a hydraulic system at the end of the day. Uh, to that end, there's also uh, bolts that secure the sprockets to the cams. Those have been known to break. Uh, fortunately, all these things have been updated over time. There's a lot of aftermarket options out there in the market. Whether you're racing it, whether it's a daily driver, whether you're building the engine, it doesn't really matter. That is the one thing you want to get ahead of before it becomes an expensive problem later on. Another thing that is often overlooked on the Vano system for the S54 is you have this little tiny screen filter here. This is on a valve that sits on the side of the Vano unit itself, but this little screen right here, 
often is forgotten about. It can become clogged with debris over time, which prevents the flow of oil to the pump. I recommend doing this at the same time you do your valve lash adjustments. It's super easy to do, there's no need not to do it. Here we have our Vanos pressure accumulator line. Very common source for oil leaks and often missed. It has a banjo fitting on this end, that's at the top of the Vanos unit, but where it's crimped for the banjo fitting on both ends, that crimp can loosen over time as the PTFE liner inside degrades. And when that happens, you'll get an oil leak. And again, this goes to the Vanos pressure accumulator, which helps maintain Vanos system pressure. Uh, so again, doing Vanos work, good time to replace this. Moving on here, we have an S54 oil pump. You know, when you think M54, M50, you always hear about the oil pump nut coming loose. And the reason for that is, is that those engines do not utilize a oil pump chain tensioner. The S54 is unique in the respect that the S54 has an oil pump chain tensioner. It's just a simple mechanical device. It helps maintain tension on the chain. And when you're talking about, you know, high RPM changes constantly all the time, any kind of slack in that chain essentially acts like an impact on this and it could cause the nut to come loose. Because the chain is tensioned, that's not so much of a problem. However, uh, we are aware that in certain applications, high performance applications, we're talking race cars, uh, the factory oiling system is not necessarily good enough all the time. That's when people start looking at dry sumps and all sorts of crazy systems like that. But what's cool about the S54 is it does have a dual pickup system. So instead of having just one pickup tube, it has two. Uh, but ultimately, it is kind of limited by the fact that it's a wet sump. When it comes to oil pump nut, yeah, if you want to safety wire it, if you want to weld it as a precautionary thing, you can. However, from what I've seen, I've, I've never seen an S54 lose its oil pump nut and therefore lose oil pressure, therefore causing catastrophic engine failure. That's really more of a non, you know, S54, Euro S50 thing. Moving on, the simplest thing you can do to take care of any car, change your oil, please. Unfortunately, there's a lot of information out there, particularly coming from BMW, where oil changes were extended. Uh, I'm a firm believer of doing every 5,000 miles if it's a regularly driven car. Uh, if it sees a lot of highway miles, you could probably go up to 7,000, 7,500 miles if that's your choice. Changing at 5,000 miles is probably your best option. Uh, there's also a lot of anti-friction additives you can use too, such as Ceratec or MOS2, which can help protect the internals of the engine. My recommendation is always going to use the Mala filter or the Genuine filter, which happens to be manufactured by Mala, but it has the pre-screen on it like this. Please don't use aftermarket oil filters. They're really poor quality. There's no need to do that. These filters are not that expensive. To that end, there is the 10W60 question. Do you need to run it? 10W60 is used for more of a noise abatement tool than it is for its overall protection of the engine. Also used to help maintain system pressure on that end. I do believe that to some degree the 10W60 could be the cause for things like excessive engine wear, particularly if you're not careful with warming up your engine or you let it idle for long periods of time or it never comes up to temperature, uh, those things will kill most engines. But when you're talking about oil this thick, this is just a choice that BMW made from an engineering perspective. And theoretically, you could run a 10W40 or a 10W50 in one of these engines to be perfectly fine. And I'm saving this one for last because this is like the regular, this is for sure one of the most regular service items you should do on the S54. And that of course is your valve lash adjustment. Uh, the S54 has a completely solid valve train, so no hydraulic lifters. Uh, valve lash is set with the shims. This is a Wiseco kit that we sell. This is the more cost-effective alternative to BMW's shim kit, which is ludicrously expensive. I mean, like, doesn't make sense expensive. This Wiseco shim kit, it has the correct size shims, uh, and they go in 0 0.04 millimeter increments, which is basically what you need to get within the window uh, of proper valve lash adjustment of this engine. Of course, there are some special tools that kind of go along with that. What this does is it has a little magnetic tip here where you can slide it under and basically pull one of these shims out. Because if you find that your valve lash is out, you have to pull the shim out, measure what the shim is, and then size the new shim accordingly to get it within the clearance window that you need to properly set valve lash. 35,000 miles, is really where you should do this, just to make sure to check it. Do all 24 valves, make sure you are where you are. Uh, that'll also help reduce wear of the valve train and also allow the engine to produce the power it's supposed to. If the valve lash is out of adjustment on this engine, it won't run right, it won't make the power it's supposed to, you're not gonna get the full experience. And uh, this is just part of the regular service interval that you need to do in this engine. If you're not sure what valve lash adjustment is or 
you know, that makes it sound scary or makes it sound intimidating, we're gonna link you to a video that shows you how to do it. We go through the entire process and try to demystify it a little bit. Super easy, not really that difficult. It just is what it is. If you wanna own one of these cars, just expect to do it. Have the shims and have the tools ready to go, which of course we carry here at fcpro.com. We have a kit specifically for it. So hopefully you're still with us. Uh, the production crew wants me to go ahead and do an outro. This is a pretty long video and we realized we talked about some stuff here that might be scary. I wanna say thank you for watching. Hope you learned something. If you have any questions or comments, which I'm sure you're gonna have, go ahead and drop it below. We'll go ahead and get back to you with that. Hit that like button if you like this video. Hit subscribe, we have a lot of videos on the way. And as always, we'll see you for the next one. Thanks for watching.